So I'm Natalie Bullock-Brown. I am currently a assistant teaching professor at North Carolina State University. I teach Africana Studies and Women's and Gender Studies and sometimes film. Um, and I am a filmmaker. Uh, I produce documentary films. I'm working with a wonderful director named Byron Hurt. Um, we're finishing up a film about hazing that will air on PBS this fall. And we're also working on a film for Nova that will air in November. Um, film is my passion. It's why I basically do what I do. Um, and I'm really grateful to be here. Hi, I'm Eric Johnson. I'm just getting in touch with, with a lot of things here. I grew up here in Winston-Salem, maybe 10 minutes from here. I used wow. to run past here. I went to Reynolds High School. And on the track team, I would run through here. Hmm. And when I left here to go to NC State to study architecture, because I thought that was the only safe, creative career, to be back here sort of full circle um, in an industry that I love, that I um, kind of knew nothing about. And that was the whole motivation for participating in this panel, uh, because there's so many um, young people in particular for whom this would be an amazing, rewarding career, but they know nothing about it. And what they do know about it is only the tip of the iceberg. And so that's another uh, piece I hope we can get into that, um, you know, in conversations that you all have with others uh, may open up some, some avenues of possibilities for friends, family, neighbors, children. Exactly. So my name's Roger Darnell. Uh, I have a PR firm I'm based in Asheville. Um, I get to work with some really cool companies like not that I work with Eric's company, but similar production, post-production, audio, graphics, motion graphics, animation. Um, and then going back several years, I had this idea of writing a book that would help people teach what I've learned, kind of open up the opportunities that helped me be able to work independently from home, um, find clients to work with at any given time. Um, you know, it, it's been a very rewarding journey for me. I went to film school, uh, University of Central Florida, and just kind of found my way into this. And so there again, I'm, I'm excited about just sharing some of this, not going on at length, but just in case it might trigger something for you all and the people that you know, who are, you know, we all get hit with these friends, family members who are like, what am I going to do? And I wanted to kind of go back to that for, for each of us and just talk a little bit about this idea of when you were maybe 15 years old and looking to the world and how you're going to make your mark. I have an 18 year old, you have younger children, you're, you have grandchildren that are in that age that are like finding their way. So when you think of where you are right now, what are your feelings about what you actually get to do every day? That's a really... It's an it's a interesting question that you pose. So when I was a teenager, I, I loved my pediatrician. And so that's what I wanted to be. Um, and I, wanted, I went to um, college with every intent uh, on becoming a, a pediatrician. Um, but I could not get through chemistry, <laughs> and um, it, it was, my mom was very clear about the fact that she was not going to pay for college beyond four years, and that I better figure out what I could do that would allow me to graduate on time. <laughs> and so I majored in English, and like I'm a Gen Xer. I think all of us are, right? Yeah, you are. Um, and even though you have grandchildren, you're Gen X. Yeah, you um, look about. Right, exactly. <laughs> and I, I um, you know, Spike Lee was an early influence because um, She's Gotta Have It came out when I was in high school. Um, but I, it didn't really come to fruition until I had kind of gone through, you know, trying to find myself in terms of a career. And finally, um, after thinking about journalism, um, I'm from Chicago, I went to Northwestern, and um, so I, I did some cold interviews with anchors that I really admired in the Chicago area when I was growing up. And after hearing that I might have to start my career in um, 
Idaho somewhere in some small town where I have to both be the camera person and the interviewer and the editor and all of that and it might be years before I might find myself in a major market. I was like, okay, no, I'm not doing that. And so I started applying for um, television production um, programs and the only one I got into was at Howard University and that was the best experience I could have had. Um, and I'll talk about that more, but yeah, pediatrician to filmmaker. <laughs> Hold on, let's just go ahead and do a little more <laughs> on that. Just, just what, whatever that. you have to say, sure, sure, carry on. Um, I guess the thing that, um, you know, when you're, when you're young, you, you, you're, you, you are trying to find yourself. Some people, you know, I guess they come out of the womb knowing what they want to be, right? My husband says that is who he is. Um, he's always wanted to be an engineer and that is what he is to this day. But I didn't really know, um, and I had to figure that out. But I, I just want to say that when I decided to apply to film school and go to Howard, there were a lot of voices that were saying, you're not gonna, like, what are you gonna do with that? Why, why are you doing that? You, you should, like my dad was telling me, you should get a job being a medical transcriber, at least it's related to medicine. And I, you know, I was like, I don't wanna do that. I wanna do film. And I knew, like in my heart, I knew deep down that that was what I was supposed to do. And it's proven to be one of the earliest sort of um, knowings that I knew about myself that you know no one can take away from me um, and so it taught me that I you know we have instincts that we need to follow and listen to and that in spite of the voices that may be around us hmm. you know we know we we often are very clear about what our interests are um, and and what direction we need to go in um, and you know it was just an amazing experience one because it was a historically black college or is a historically black college. I had incredible professors. I grew up and learned under the Ethiopian film filmmaker Haile Garima, whose um, Sankofa is um, you know, a seminal film documentary, not documentary, but narrative film. He's really just getting his flowers now as a result of a lot of accolades and acknowledgement from Ava DuVernay. Um, so I just had amazing teachers, it was an incredible experience, and it launched me, and it has served me well. And you know, I, I'm here today really because of that experience and, and continuing to know, even though my past you know, kind of detoured, I went the long way, really. I'm just really getting back into my career over the past maybe five, to 10 years, maybe really not even that, past five years, I've really gotten back into filmmaking after being a mom and teaching and doing other things. But I guess the point is that I've known. It's always been a passion that's never left me. And I'm just really grateful to have the opportunity to do, as you said, what I love to do every single day. Love that. I'll pick up on that. Your your question, you know, what do we think about the the work we're able to do? And as I pull up to the studio daily, I try to remind myself to just be uh, super thankful um, because, uh, well, a number of reasons we're working on just some projects that I could only dream about years ago, and able to do it in Raleigh, North Carolina. I, as, as I said, I grew up here. I love North Carolina. It was a great place to to raise children and, and to have some semblance of uh, balanced life. Um, and many people would tell you that the work we're doing can't be done here. You have to pack yeah. your bags and right. go elsewhere. Uh, and um, so to be able to prove that point uh, wrong has been rewarding. Um, and, um, you know, thinking back over my history, um, I too believe, and I was raised with a, a, a belief that each of us is given sort of gifts and talents and abilities. and um, But it's not a given. You have to mine those gems and it's not the easy road. And as I look back, um, my life prepared me for exactly what I'm doing now, which I didn't do a good job of describing. I head up the uh, music and sound department at Trailblazer Studios, mm -hmm. which is a production and post facility in Raleigh, North Carolina. <clears throat> and as early as I can remember, um, I remember in a podcast interview I did a little while ago, 
reconnecting with the memory of, I guess folks are old enough in here to remember cassette recorders, you know, you put the cheap cassette in and hit record and play. Um, I would do that with television shows. I would record my favorite television shows. This is long before DVRs, long before Netflix. And then over the next week, I would listen back to the show. So oh, wow. the thing to focus on is the music and the sound. Um, the theater of the imagination. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. And I never thought of that as preparing for anything. And then in high school, I played in a band. We played bars and clubs and that sort of thing. And uh, ended up one evening going into a recording studio for the first time. And I just felt, you know, a light come on. But again, I didn't know uh, that a career could be put together, especially while staying in North Carolina at that point. My mom was here going to college and, you know, that, that story. Um, so uh, again, looking back, thankfully, uh, I feel like I was able to prepare for, for what I'm doing now, um, but didn't get there the easy way. Mm. Sure. Well, um, so I was in Orlando. Uh, I'd moved every year of high school and then um, wound up out on my own at 18 and sort of had to come up with a plan. I thought I was going to get a Air Force four-year ROTC scholarship. I picked a college that I, it, it wasn't, it was very haphazard and none of that shaped up. So um, I just wound up thinking, uh, I did. I just threw myself into work. That didn't exactly go well. Next thing you know, I signed up. I, the last school I wanted to go to graduating from high school in Orlando was the University of Central Florida, but that's where I wound up. After I went into Air Force basic training, I signed up for the reserves. All those things were super, I mean, I decided, I think that was a key, was it was my decision. Um, it took me six years to complete that degree program, but I got degrees in film and television. And at that time, 